All right, welcome to the video, guys. <clears throat> welcome to the video, guys. Today we are talking camera basics. Now, notice that I do have a Canon DSLR in my hands, and we'll be using this to show you the basics and demonstrate the techniques for the duration of this video. But these principles, these concepts that I'm going to be explaining to you guys are not gonna be limited to what brand of camera you have, so you can shoot on Nikon, Sony, Fuji, Panasonic, or even <laughs> even Olympus. It doesn't really matter what brand you shoot. 99% of the things we're gonna cover in this video will be usable among all of the different camera brands. Just wanted to get that little disclaimer out there. So to give you a basic roadmap of what we're gonna be covering in this video, we're gonna glaze over the big three. So shutter speed, ISO, and aperture, the exposure settings you need to dial in. And then once we talk about those basic things, we'll go into what other components to operating a camera such as this you will need to know in order to shoot fantastic videos. Even though this video focuses on shooting video, it's not gonna be limited to that. Most of the ideas, except for like frame rates, are going to be transferable to photographers as well. So if you want to learn about how to shoot cool photos with your camera, do not worry, don't click away because this might still be the right video for you. Just watch all the way to the end and hopefully you guys will learn something about how to operate cameras. So first off, we're talking exposure settings. Now these three ideas and concepts were pretty difficult for me to understand and grasp until I really put myself into manual mode on my camera, which meant I had to dial in my exposure perfectly, otherwise my shots would fall apart. So starting with ISO or digital ISO, this is the light sensitivity that your digital image has. These levels can be controlled and adjusted to get the look that you are going for. Now most cameras, pretty much would say all cameras, have an ISO sweet spot. So basically a light sensitivity level where it will maintain the highest amount of dynamic range and the lowest amount of image noise. For most cameras, especially APS-C cameras, this level lies between 100 and 100. <laughs> now, if you're shooting full frame, you can usually push that up a little bit, but this will really truly depend on what kind of sensor you're using, whether that be full frame, APS-C, Super 35, medium format, micro four thirds, the list goes on and on and so does the ISO sensitivity sweet spot that your camera will have. So for mine, for a full frame camera, which is the Canon 5D Mark III, the sweet spot ISO level is gonna be between 100 and 400. I can probably push it to 800 or even 1600. Uh, without seeing significant image noise, but anything beyond there is pretty unideal. And that's where the other two points of exposure settings will really come in because you can pick up the slack from where the ISO stops. So next up is shutter speed. And this is the amount of time that your digital sensor is exposed to light. This is pretty straightforward if you choose to follow the 180 degree rule, which you don't necessarily have to. Now this rule states that whatever frame rate you're using to capture video, simply just double that number through your shutter speed. And in many cases, you'll have to round up or down to get the number you're going for. This will create the most natural level of motion blur in your video. And if you're going for photography, just be aware of what you're shooting. If you're shooting fast moving things, crank your shutter speed up to capture those. If you're shooting long exposure, just drop it down a bit. So the third point of exposure is aperture. This is the size of the diaphragm opening in a camera lens, which regulates the amount of light being exposed to your sensor. Now, this is usually measured in f-stops on traditional camera lenses, but in cinematography, it's usually measured in t-stops, which is something that is a bit different, so we're not gonna be going over that in this video. We're gonna mostly be relating to aperture through f-stops. So as many of you guys have probably seen in TV or in film, and ultimately this is controlled by a low aperture. So the lower the f-stop number in aperture, the shallower depth of field and the more bokeh you are gonna be seeing. As you increase the f-stop number, you're gonna see a larger amount of depth of field with more things being in focus. So I generally shoot wide open with pretty much any lens I use, which means the f-stop is at the lowest number it can go and the diaphragm of the lens is as open as it can be, which allows as much light into the sensor as the lens allows. Now, there are some downsides to this, such as a loss of some sharpness and some vignetting in your image, but this will really depend on the quality of glass and lenses that you are choosing to use. So now we're gonna be talking about with the camera, what things you need to know to get awesome cinematic videos. So most cameras are customizable to a certain degree. Now, depending on what camera you have, I want you to get your settings locked into where you want them to be. So you can find videos to further customize your camera settings to make it just a little bit quicker and speedier for you. It's kind of like shortcuts on laptop. It's like having those keyboard shortcuts, but for your camera, just to speed things up. 
once you have everything settled in and dialed in just the way you want it, I want you guys to flip to the manual mode. So most cameras will have a dial or an on-screen prompt to go to the manual mode designated by a capital letter M. Now it's very important that we're shooting in manual mode because you will have full control over your exposure settings. And as I said before, it's the best way to learn about shutter speed, ISO and aperture. And it's very important because for most consumer level cameras, colors and exposure that you see is what is gonna get baked into the footage. So once the camera stops rolling and you have the footage in post, you can't really alter it dramatically. So unless you're shooting raw video, the only way to perfectly expose your shots is through shooting in manual mode and adjusting your exposure before you even hit record. So frame rates are pretty straightforward. This just states how many frames per second your sensor will be capturing in video format. Well, unless you're shooting with a motion JPEG codec, which in that case, I feel bad for you. For videos like this, or anything that you don't need slow motion for, shoot in 24 frames per second. All right, I don't care what kind of video it is, just shoot in 24, all right? It looks good, it looks cinematic, and I find that anything that's non-24 FPS, just, it looks too much like video. It's hard to explain, but it's definitely something that the eye picks up on. So in this case, we're shooting in 24 frames per second, like I said. For your shutter speed, you're gonna to wanna to lock it in to a level of 50. This is gonna create the most natural motion blur when I'm moving, when subjects are moving, when the camera's moving. It's gonna allow for that cinematic look. If you were to have your shutter speed a bit lower than this, the shots might look frenetic, and that could be a stylistic choice. If you have the shutter speed a bit higher, things could look a little bit too smooth. And so if you want to break the 180 degree rule, that is totally fine. Just make sure you're intentional and have a reason to do so. How does knowing what frame rate you're gonna be shooting in affect your ISO? Well, we already know how it affects the shutter speed. And so the reason why ISO is affected is not inherently because of the frame rate, but because the shutter speed will be altered by what frame rate you're choosing to use. The two frame rates that I primarily shoot in are either 24 frames per second or 60 frames per second. And knowing which one I'm gonna be using is absolutely essential to knowing how I should expose my ISO. If I'm shooting at 60 frames per second, the image is naturally gonna be darker than when I'm shooting at 24 because my shutter speed is at 125 as opposed to being at 50. So you're gonna have to adjust your ISO levels accordingly. Make sure you're not pushing your ISO past 1600. Otherwise, you're gonna see some pretty noisy images. And as far as aperture, this can pretty much stay straightforward unless you know that you want a certain look to your shot. So I always keep my lenses wide open, so at the lowest f-stop number that it can go, because I like having the background blur. I like having the shallow depth of field and the nice quality bokeh. That's something that I'm really interested in having for my videos. If that's not your style, then that's totally fine. You can adjust your aperture accordingly, but that's just how I do it. So next we're gonna go to the menu setting, and we're going to look at white balance. So most of the time, shooting an auto white balance is gonna do you just fine. Sometimes you might have to wait a couple of seconds for your sensor to adjust the white balance according to whatever scenario you are in. If you're fine with waiting like a few seconds and you don't need to capture things like instantaneously, and then I would say you could be fine with using the auto white balance. The only thing is, if there are any problems with your white balance, you're not gonna be able to dramatically change it in post without having your 8-bit footage fall apart. So I know Canon and most other companies do a really great job of putting some white balance presets in, such as daylight, shade, cloudy tungsten light, white fluorescent light, flash, and then being able to customize the color temperature. Now, I'm not a big color temperature guy. All I know is that 5200 Kelvin is generally what daylight looks like, but that doesn't really help me because I find myself using the presets more often than not. So you got your exposure set, and once you set your white balance, the next thing you're gonna go to is, actually, we're gonna talk about this really quick. So I know that at least for Canon, they include a lot of options that sound really cool, but in, in execution, they're not actually that great. So for instance, the highlight tone priority, I always keep that off because from what I believe, it takes everything in your image and kind of just darkens it a little bit more. Um, so I just keep it off because I want to have control over my dynamic range and everything that's in my shot. And things such as like high ISO speed noise reduction, that sounds fantastic. But anything above standard, you can really see some imperfections in the image. And so that's not always ideal. Same thing with Canon's digital image stabilization. If you push it to the enhanced mode, the image crops in a ton and you lose a lot of the sharpness. So for most of the kind of add-on features that your camera has, unless you research it and you know that it's gonna enhance your image and enhance the look you're going for, I'd say don't turn it on, just leave it off and try to account for things like high ISO noise and blown highlights, try and do that yourself. Okay, next we're gonna be talking about picture profiles. So for video, it's pretty widely 
accepted that a flat image is gonna maintain more dynamic range. Dynamic range is kind of like a measure of lighting contrast that an image can have. So if your camera has high dynamic range, that is a very good thing because basically it means that in the highlights or the very bright things in an image, it'll show the detail without having just pure light bursting through, breaking apart your image. And same thing for the darks, for the shadows. The dark parts of your image are still gonna maintain detail and you won't just see pitch black. Dynamic range is something that I'm kind of obsessed about, uh, especially with maximizing using my ISO to enhance the amount of dynamic range that I can get. But also, as I was just saying, one way that you can get a little bit more dynamic range out of your camera is to shoot in a flat picture profile, which means that the colors and contrast of your image are going to be really low resulting in an almost gray and dull image. Now ideally your camera would have a log format to shoot in, log meaning that you can go in post, color correct and color grade the image to get it to your desired look so you won't be posting the footage right away straight from camera because everything is pretty much just dull, desaturated, no contrast, there's nothing, there's no life to the footage because you're gonna bring the magic in post. Now if you don't have log, you can shoot in a flat picture profile. I'll show you how to do that on Canon cameras. So in your menu, you're gonna go to picture style. You're gonna select neutral. You're gonna press the info button to adjust it. Make sure you turn your sharpness all the way down. This is basically just digital sharpness that your camera will add. I've tried it out, I've tested it at like two or three. I heard one YouTuber say that this is the ideal place to have your camera. It's not, you know, skin looks so bad at even a sharpness level of two. So just turn it all the way down. Contrast, you're gonna want all the way down. Saturation, all the way down. And color tone, you're gonna want that at zero in the middle. Okay, so now that you have this flatter picture profile, you can go in after you're done shooting and color correct and add the look that you want. But don't go crazy, okay? Because historically, I have gone pretty crazy with my color grades uh, just because I had no clue what I was doing. Uh, and so the image just fell apart and nothing looked good. Everything, the white balance was off, the colors were off. Make sure you're adding minute details, minute changes here and there, because especially with a camera like this, most cameras can't really capture a ton of color information, which won't give you very much flexibility editing the footage without having it breaking apart and without colors shifting and breaking all of that. All right, so the last thing that we're gonna be talking about is codecs. What is a codec? This is basically the file format that you're your camera chooses to shoot the video and compress it down into. For photographers, this would fall under the image quality category, uh, so like RAW or JPEG. For codecs, usually Canon offers some pretty good options. So as you can see here, we have all I, IPB, and that's about it. So all I has a very low amount of compression. This means that a lot of detail is being captured. There's a high bit rate, so you're getting a lot of information, which will allow for a little bit more flexibility in post. And then the IPB mode is more highly compressed, um, which means the file size is gonna be smaller. So you're gonna save some storage. You're not gonna be having as monstrous gigabyte eating videos as if you were to use an all eye codec. Only downside is that you're not gonna have as much flexibility with the footage in post. So just choose based on what your needs are. I usually shoot 99% of the time in the IPB mode because that's the only mode that my camera has. But when I use the 5D Mark III and shoot 1080, sometimes I use that all eye codec. So I hope you guys liked the video. As you kind of noticed, it's the little things that make a really big difference and go a long way in helping you create amazing cinematic videos. If there are any points that I missed or that you'd like me to go over in a future video, throw it down in the comment section below. So uh, if you enjoyed, give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends if you found any of this information useful. We will see you on the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching.